Democrats and their media sympathizers love, love, love them some whistleblowers, provided the whistleblowers whistleblow against Republicans like Donald Trump. President Donald Trump has been caught red-handed with his hand in the taxpayer cookie jar by withholding, without justification, $391 million in aid that had been approved on a bipartisan basis to the Ukraine. This whistleblower um, allegation is so serious, it gets to the very heart of our nation's democracy, uh, the integrity of our elections. Have you reached an agreement yet with the whistleblower and his or her attorneys about coming before the committee and providing the information firsthand? Yes, we have. Uh, and as Director McGuire uh, promised during the hearing, uh, that whistleblower will be allowed to come in and come in without uh, a minder from the Justice Department or from the White House to tell the whistleblower what they can and cannot say. But where was all this whistleblower love during the eight years of the Obama administration? After all, this is an administration that went after whistleblowers and the reporters who reported on the whistleblowing with a vengeance unprecedented in American history. Robert Greenwald is a left-wing filmmaker. He did a documentary on the unprecedented attack against whistleblowers during the eight years of the Obama administration. Literally, the Espionage Act is being used against whistleblowers. Calling whistleblowers spies is really, in many ways, beyond the pale of anything we've seen from any other administration. President Obama is doing a terrible disservice to democracy, to free speech, and to the power and importance of both whistleblowers and journalists. And as Jane Mayer and Dana Priest say, and many others in the film, he's gotten too close to the CIA. And the national security state, as we know, is an enormous, powerful entity. The film tries to connect those dots and show this is not an accident. And in a piece called Obama's War on Whistleblowers, the center-left Atlantic publication said this. The Justice Department's subpoena of New York Times reported James Rison Monday was the latest sign of how aggressive the Obama administration is being in his campaign against government whistleblowers. The extent to which the administration is prosecuting leakers has troubled those who see leakers as speakers of truth to power. In President Obama's 26 months in office, civilian and military prosecutors have charged five people in cases involving leaking information more than all previous presidents combined, reports the Times." End of quote. And the left-wing New Yorker in a 2011 piece said, when President Barack Obama took office in 2009, he championed the cause of government transparency and spoke admiringly of whistleblowers, whom he described as often the best source of information about waste, fraud, and abuse in government. But the Obama administration has pursued leak prosecutions with a surprising relentlessness. Including the Drake case, it has been using the Espionage Act to press criminal charges in five alleged instances of national security leaks. More such prosecutions than have occurred in all previous administrations combined. End of quote. Alex Gibney is a left-wing filmmaker whom Esquire called the most important documentarian of our time. He did a documentary called We Steal Secrets, the story of WikiLeaks. Check out what he says about the Obama administration's penchant for going after whistleblowers. Let's be honest and say that the Obama administration is the most aggressive prosecutor of leaks in American history. And they're going after leakers and, in a collateral way, after journalists in a way that's more aggressive than anything that's ever been seen in our history. Scott Horton is a law professor who's written for publications like Harper's and The American Lawyer. How does he assess Obama's record on whistleblowers and the reporters who report on their whistleblowing? Terrible. Um... He has, uh, I think, as at this point, he has brought twice as many uh, Espionage Act prosecutions um, as have all other presidents combined. Um, so, uh, and I think is some of the cases that have been brought on his watch are cases that uh, even in the Bush years, the Bush Justice Department uh, 
could not bring itself to actually bring in charge, like the case of Thomas Drake. Um, so, uh, and I think we have the case of John Kiriakou going on right now, which is certainly one of the most absurd uh, espionage prosecutions ever. John Kiriakou, of course, was a former CIA uh, officer who published uh, a best-selling book uh, and then advised uh, Senator Kerry's committee in connection with some investigations. Uh, my information is that those investigations uh, pissed off senior people within the CIA and they were eager to find a way to get even with them. So uh, this whistleblower prosecution uh, was launched. So I think these whistleblower prosecutions largely have been brought against people who are bona fide whistleblowers, uh, who are discharging uh, citizenly duties and bringing to the public's attention questions of waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, under the statutes, they're entitled to protection. They should have that. Uh, and uh, trying them uh, on Espionage Act charges is really ridiculous. Now, you can't get more left-wing than Daniel Ellsberg, who leaked the so-called Pentagon Papers during the Nixon administration. I said before Obama, there were three indictments. Obama has brought five in these two years. If he brought it against Assange, if they did six, it would be twice as many as all previous presidents put together. And what's going on here? Well, it's part of a policy uh, of generally use of state secrets privilege, uh, use of um, um, against uh, dismissing lawsuits, being totally secretive, uh, not being at all forthcoming on freedom of information in terms of uh, these areas. So it's part of a policy. But why more than others? I, I don't, I'd be interested to hear anybody's suggestion. Uh, in fact, I think you were asking me that the other night, Peter. Uh, why is it that Obama is pressing this so strongly? And then there's the especially egregious way the Obama administration went after Fox reporter James Rosen. Here's what CBS said about that. Well, good morning, Nora. Good morning, Charlie. You know, I mean, these revelations have really just set up a firestorm of criticism from the left and the right. For the first time ever, a presidential administration is treating news reporting like a crime and a reporter like a criminal suspect. I will always honor the confidentiality of my dealings with all of my sources. Yeah. Fox News reporter James Rosen vowed Wednesday night to protect his source for a scoop he got back in 2009, reporting then that North Korea would respond to sanctions with more nuclear tests. But the information was classified, and the FBI launched an investigation to uncover Rosen's source that quickly focused on Rosen himself. The level of government surveillance over a reporter was unprecedented. Agents monitored Rosen's movements in and out of the State Department. They searched his personal emails and combed through his cell phone records. White House Press Secretary Jay Carney has deflected questions on the case. The subpoena says James Rosen is a potential criminal because he's a reporter. Is the White House comfortable with that standard never before seen in a leak investigation? And Mr. Horton, the law professor, mentioned the case of Drake. That would be Thomas Drake. Here's what 60 Minutes said. Nearly two years before 9-11, America's largest intelligence agency was tracking three of the Al-Qaeda hijackers. But the information obtained by the National Security Agency wasn't analyzed in a way that would uncover the plot. Inside the super-secret NSA, Several analysts and managers believe that the agency had a powerful tool that might have had a chance to head off 9-11, but it wasn't used. One of those agency insiders was Thomas Drake, who thought that taxpayer money was being wasted on useless intelligence gathering projects while promising technology was ignored. Drake tried to get the word out, but now, as a result, he's been charged under the Espionage Act and could spend the rest of his life in prison. And just how was that case resolved? The Washington Post. Days before his trial was set to begin, former National Security Agency manager and accused leaker Thomas A. Drake accepted a plea deal from the government Thursday that drops the charges in his indictment, absolves him of mishandling classified information, and calls for no prison time. It is also a setback for the Obama administration's effort to punish alleged leakers of national security secrets using a widely criticized World War I era law, end of quote.
but, but now that President Trump is in office, whistleblowers need to be loved, embraced, and protected. The whistleblower has the right on the statute to remain anonymous, uh, and we uh, will do everything in our power to make sure that that whistleblower is protected, that that whistleblower's um, uh, preferences in terms of their anonymity are respected. Uh, and let's, let's not make any mistake here. The president wants to make this all about the whistleblower and suggest people that come forward with evidence of his wrongdoing are somehow treasonous uh, and should be treated as traitors and spies. Um, this is a blatant effort to intimidate witnesses. Finally, former presidential candidate and current Democratic member of the House, Eric Swalwell, had a tough day at the office. The president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. <laughs> I'm Larry Elder, and this has been the Larry Elder Show for Epic Times. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Poor Swalwell. By the way, he denies he did it. <laughs>